Hello everyone, my name is Tish Winchester and this is my research presentation for PRM 498C. The title of this presentation is Measuring the Effects of Carrying Capacity as it pertains to park resources and visitors' experiences in Arches National Park. I will be taking you through the concept of carrying capacity, research that has already been conducted, and current research that is being conducted. I will then go over future issues involving carrying capacity. Thank you for joining me today and I hope that you learned something that you may not have known before. In the United States, there are 58 national parks. Can anyone guess how many people visit those parks yearly? No, not a hundred thousand. No, not a million. 300 million people visit national parks each year. That's 300 million opportunities to disturb fragile soils, to disturb vegetation and wildlife, and it presents a possible issue with crowding. That is what brings me here today. My hope is that by the end of this presentation, you will have a better understanding of what carrying capacity is and the danger it presents to our national park system. I want you to think about this. Would you want to go to a national park, or any park for that matter, that has been degraded because of too much foot traffic? I wouldn't, and I doubt you would either. That is why carrying capacity is very important. If you've never heard of carrying capacity, it refers to the number of visitors an area can sustain without degrading natural resources or harming visitors' experiences. The origin of carrying capacity can be traced all the way back to the early 1960s. It wasn't until 18 years later that the National Parks and Recreation Act of 1978 went into effect. This act required a management plan that included the identification and implementation for visitor carrying capacities. According to one researcher, Carey, the availability of suitable conditions for living determines the number of organisms that can exist inside an environment. Maybe you're thinking, is it even remotely possible to come up with a definite number of people that can exist inside of a park at one time? And if you weren't thinking that, hopefully you are now. That is exactly what researcher Brown and his colleagues tried to determine. But in the end, it was researcher Carey that determined that a singular number directed toward maintaining a protect, protected area cannot be developed. So what does this mean for our national park system? Since the mid-1970s, the idea of planning and management frameworks for addressing carrying capacity issues has been on many researchers' minds. There are four different types of frameworks that have been put in place. The frameworks include Recreation Opportunity Spectrum, or ROS, the Limits of Acceptable Change, or LAC, the Process for Visitor Impact Management, or VIM, and the Visitor Experience and Resource Protection, which is VERP, V-E-R-P. I will focus on that last framework, Visitor Experience and Resource Protection. VERP is a fairly new process that deals with carrying capacity in terms of the resources and the quality of the visitor experience. It contains a prescription for desired future resource and social conditions. The visitor experience and resource protection framework was initially applied at Arches National Park in Utah. The purpose of this application was to refine the VERP framework and provide a model for the rest of the national park system. Arches National Park comprises of 73,000 acres of high elevation desert with slick rock formation, including nearly 2,000 sandstone arches. Just those alone makes this park very, very popular. VERP was used and broken into two phases. Phase one aimed at identifying potential indicators of quality. 
Personal interviews were conducted with visitors at the park. The interviewers suggested several social and environmental indicators of quality for the park. This included the number of people at front country attraction sites and along trails, the number of visitor groups encountered along backcountry trails and at campsites, the number of vehicles encountered along roads, the number of social trails and associated soil vegetation impacts, the level of trail development and visitor knowledge of regula regulation regarding off-trail hiking. Phase 2 was designed to gather data to help associated standards of quality. 1,500 park visitors were surveyed. Five indicators received special attention, all of which dealt with the number of people at a given place within the park. Findings from Phase 2 provided data to help formulate standards of quality for each of the nine park zones. Visitors reported that the number of people at any one time at such attraction sites were important in determining the quality of their experience. The way I like to think about this is I go out into nature to get away from the crazy busy life that I have. I don't want to go to a place that is crowded with a bunch of people. It takes away from the essence of nature and the reason that I went. So the number of people at one time at the delicate arch, which is one of the most popular arches at the park, was selected as an indicator of quality. Visitors determined that up to 30 people at one time was an acceptable number. Based on these findings, 30 people at one time was selected as the standard of quality. So as you can see, VERP, getting people um, surveyed, 1,500 people were surveyed during this phase, they helped determine that 30 people at a given place in a park is an acceptable number. Any more than that is too many, it becomes too crowded. But 30, they determined to be a perfect number. My concerns for the future revolve around the growing population and the growing popularity of national parks. 30 people at one time has been found to be an acceptable number for many different parks, but what happens when that number is exceeded for a long period of time? What happens to the ecosystems in the area when foot traffic is too heavy? In the park system, I believe it becomes a question of whether protecting the environment is more important than pleasing the public. I think it is important that we protect our sacred national parks. Could potential endangered ecosystems be rebuilt or would that prove to be too costly? My first thought would be to make heavily traveled areas off limits, but that would affect park attendance and revenue. I believe it becomes a matter of equaling out protecting our parks while still caring, catering to visitor experience. As more research is done with the four frameworks, hopefully an equilibrium is achieved between visitors and protecting the land. In conclusion, carrying capacity refers to the number of visitors an area can sustain without degrading natural resources and harming visitors' experiences. VERP, or Visitor Experience and Resource, Resource Protection, was used to determine the number of people at one time that was suitable for an area at Arches National Park. Vis visitors determined that 30 people at one time was suitable as to not ruin their experience. The growing population still presents an issue, but with the frameworks that are set in place, Carrying capacity and the protection of resources can be contained. Thank you so much for your time. I hope you have learned something, and I hope that if carrying capacity wasn't on your mind before this, that it is now. And, um, you know, I want you to think about when you go to national parks, when you go to any parks, how many people have been there before you? How many people have stepped on this ecosystem or... Um, walk to this trail. How many people have been down this road? You know, every person before you is degrading the land. Whether they mean to or not, it is happening. How many people is it going to take for this to be destroyed? 
You know, that's why carrying capacity is so important. We want to determine a specific number as to what a part can hold, what a part can handle. So if you hadn't been thinking about that, I hope you have now, and I hope that I have shed some light on this issue and how important it is. Thank you again. I hope you have enjoyed this presentation.